thinking of exercising power, well, today we're here to talk about uh, something that's really become very prevalent uh, throughout the upper echelons of our society, uh, and that is imposing woke ideology on the economy, usually by some of the biggest economic actors that we have in our country, whether it's Wall Street banks, whether it's mass major asset managers, whether it's big tech companies. Uh, and what you've seen is you've seen a rise of something called ESG, Environment Social Governance, where they will grade different companies uh, based on how they're performing on those metrics, and then even using that when they're managing pension funds for people. I mean, we've got retired teachers, law enforcement that, that rely on these pension funds, and they're putting in all these other criteria rather than just what's the best investment. Uh, you've also seen companies flex their muscle in a variety of ways, in ways that are more political. So we're going to talk about a couple of things we're going to be doing, but, but this is an important issue because it raises the question of, you know, who governs society? You know, do we govern ourselves through our Constitution and through our elections, or do we have these masters of the universe occupying these commanding heights of society? Are they able to use their economic power to impose policies on the country that they could not do so at the ballot box? And that's really what you're seeing with all this. And for every master of the universe who's prattling on about you know, no emissions and all this stuff. I don't see very many of them giving up their private jets. You know, they're living their own life and they want the burden of their policies uh, to fall on working class Americans. And so whether it's something that uh, when you fill up your gas tank and what kind of energy policy does this country have? I mean, I think we should be energy independent in the United States. I think we should utilize our own resources here in the United States. Well. I think a woke, uh, woke capital and the ESG movement would, would say the opposite. I mean, they would say stop producing here in the United States and basically make us more dependent uh, on foreign energy and make Americans pay a lot more, not only at the pump with their utility bills and everything else. So, so, so that's wrong. But here's the thing. If they ran on that policy, uh, they would have a hard time winning a lot of elections on that policy because that's not what most Americans want to see. They want to see affordable energy. They see how much it impacts their family's budget and the overall economy. You've also seen different uh, institutions effectively collude to disfavor certain industries like the firearms industry. You, know, you don't like that and so you want to not allow them to say get financing uh, for banks. You've seen asset managers who manage the pension funds say they are going to be doing things like quote stakeholder capitalism which is taking all these political factors and injecting that into the financial system. And think about some of these woke companies. What did they do two years ago? Massive amounts of investment to BLM. Now, what did the BLM leaders do with that? They bought mansions with that money. Have you seen how many mansions some of these people are now living in? So that was a total fraud, and a lot of these companies pumped a lot of money into that. And so that's just what we're doing. So today, uh, we are announcing that uh, we're going to take some action administratively, but we're going to work with Speaker Renner to make sure that we have statutory reforms uh, so that uh, we're putting the people of Florida uh, first, and we're going to do what's in their best interest, not whatever the delusions of some wealthy, woke CEO wants to do. So that means a number of things. One, we're going to prohibit the State Board of Administration fund managers, which is the State Board of Administration is the state of Florida's entity that manages the state of Florida's pension funds. So, you know, it's over, it's close to 200 billion. It was probably 200 billion. The market's gone down. So it's, um, but it's a lot of money. Uh, and so we want to make sure that they are not using political factors when investing the state's money. We want them to invest the state's money for the best interests of the beneficiaries of those funds, which is, again, the people that are retired cops and teachers and other, other public employees. Uh, we also are going to require SBA fund managers uh, to only consider maximizing the return on investment on behalf of Florida's retirees. I think that's what people want to see. They want to see a good pension system. Uh, we also are going to prohibit 
Wall Street banks, credit card companies, and money transmitters like PayPal from discriminating against customers for their religious, political, or social beliefs. They're using things like social credit scores to be able to marginalize people that they don't like. And we'll hear from uh, some folks that, that, that have experience uh, with that. But the thing about the politicization uh, of the economy in this way, it benefits the largest, most powerful corporations, and it disadvantages the small and medium-sized businesses. And so this is not something that is empowering kind of the little guy. You know, this is something in many respects that is crushing the little guy. And so we want to make sure that we're standing on the side uh, of, of average people. And look, there are different, different things where they've taken positions on. I mean, for example, when I was in Congress, one of the things that we did when President Trump was in office we authorized oil from Anwar in Alaska. You know, the Alaska, they wanted, they wanted Anwar for a long time to be able to do this massive amounts of energy there. And so this is a boon. I mean, not only were we energy independent prior to fully exploiting that before Biden really kneecapped it, that would be such a boon uh, for our energy independence. But what happened was, you know, at the end of 2020, a lot of the Wall Street banks said they would not uh, fund anything involving exploration or development in Anwar. So even though the people's representatives passed it, the president signed it, you know, they're saying that they're not, they're colluding and they're going to exclude any type of financing for doing that type of production, which of course would benefit our national security and it would benefit people at the pump. They also, many of these banks have said we are not doing any financing or providing any services for contractors for immigration enforcement. So they're basically using their economic power to try to have open border policies, which is not good for this country. We even had a, uh, a company here called the GEO Group, which does private, uh, they do detainee ops for ICE, they'll do prisons, they do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, Florida, we use the services because we charge less when you do private, but you don't have to do it. It's up to the states to decide what they want to do. But all these Wall Street banks cut off the credit uh, to the GEO group because there were activists who want to abolish police, abolish ICE, that were giving them a lot of blowback for providing that financing. And so they weren't able, those activists cannot implement those policies through the, through the ballot box. People don't want to abolish prisons. People don't want to abolish ICE. People don't want to defund law enforcement. Uh, and so they try to do it through the back door by basically kneecapping uh, some of these companies. And so that is something that's wrong, and that's something that we do not want to see um, here in the United States. You also have things like PayPal, and you're going to hear from Tina about PayPal, how they will cut off people that they basically disagree with. So you have an operation, maybe a political uh, type group, you're doing different stuff, and then all of a sudden, you're locked out of your account. You saw what they did with the GoFundMe, with the Canadian truckers. They're raising this money. All of a sudden, they freeze the amount of the, the, the accounts just because they had a political disagreement about vaccine mandates. So this is something that's, I think, very fundamental in terms of who we are as a, as a society, uh, and do we want our society to be governed uh, by some of the most economically elite and powerful interests in society. And I think our economy is going to be much better off if everything is not politicized. You know, it used to be like your businesses would do, it wasn't a political issue. You didn't have to take positions on every little thing. Now, almost everything that's being done, there's a whole political overtone to it. Uh, and that, you can't run an economy effectively if that's the case. That's not good. Clearly, we've got a lot of economic problems under Biden with what he's done since he's come in with the inflation, the gas prices. You know, we're going to get the, the GDP report, but it's basically been textbook that if you have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, you're a recession. Well, now they're trying to redefine what a recession is. <laughs> And they're getting help from people in the media saying, oh, well, it's not really, uh, not really a recession. And so, you know, this is just ridiculous. But that's, I think, kind of what you see. So, so, so there's a lot of problems uh, with the economy as it is. 
you know, do you really want to go down this road where every single thing is being politicized? And it's hard to even run an organization if you, you have activist employees kind of pushing you. I think the, the thing with the woke capital, it's really two, I think, main reasons why you've seen it. One is you do have employees now, not a majority, but there are some that they believe they're entitled to have their employer basically emote the same political values as they do. And they think that that's very important. I mean, they don't want their businesses even being neutral. They view that as, as, as not acceptable. So they have to toe the line what the kind of the loudest, most active employees want. Uh, the problem with that is that then the inmates are running the asylum because they get to always say this. Most of the other employees are kind of the silent majority. They're not asking for this. Some of the positions are contrary to what they want. And so wouldn't you rather just be neutral than doing that? But I do think a lot of inside the company there's been activists and then outside groups have also furthered this that has caused. But then I also think, you know, some of these folks, it's one thing to make a lot of money. Some of these folks really want to exercise power over the rest of us. And I think it's a power play where, yes, some of these people that are running these institutions are not electable if they ever wanted to run for anything because they're just not appealing in terms of what they would stand for. But if they could do policy through a large bank or an asset manager or something like that, well, man, they're really shaping, shaping society uh, based on their ideological vision. And so that's, I think, what we've seen. So what we're doing in Florida today is we're taking a stand against that. Uh, we, we don't want to see the economy further politicized, and we want to push back against the politicization that's already happened. Uh, our investment uh, funds should be for the best interest of our beneficiaries here in the state of Florida. It should not be a vehicle uh, to impose an ideological agenda. And the same thing about people doing business in Florida, particularly these major financial institutions, you know, they should not be colluding with one another uh, to marginalize people that they have political disagreements with. That is not the way you can run an economy effectively. So we are going to be doing some stuff on SBA uh, through our board meeting very soon, and I think that that will be something that will be very positive. But we are also going to work with Speaker Renner when he comes in to solidify that in statute in the state of Florida. Because what happens is a company, a CEO, or a, or a fund manager, they have what's called a fiduciary duty uh, to perform in a way that is maximizing the best interests of the shareholders. And so that has really never been that controversial. Everyone knows what you mean by that. Well, what's happened more recently is they say, well, you know, actually, the best interest of the shareholders may not be apparent right now. Maybe we'll be doing things that will cause less returns in the short term, but eventually, over a long enough time horizon, clearly what we're doing is in the best interest of everybody, right? Yeah, that's, that's too cute by half. So we're going we're gonna to nip that in the bud. We're going to make sure that a Florida statutes are very clear about what your fiduciary obligation is to the people that, that benefit. And we're also going to make very clear that uh, discrimination, particularly in the financial sector, is not something that we want to see uh, here in the state of Florida. So 